this video, I'm going to talk to you about the Alley Bucket accounts and how to fund them and also about the boosters. If you have not done this or you have no idea what I'm talking about, look up at the screen here to get the video link to my first one, get a, to, to get familiar, and then come back to this one so we can help you get those funded so you can start your saving journey. So once you get your buckets, you're going to go right into your account. And once again, you're going to go down here to organize and then you will see all of your buckets. You want to do distribute. This is where you will go to actually put the funds into each of your accounts from this core section. Now, just for a little um, reference point, you know, the core is where all of your money sits. It's the same thing as your regular savings account. And this is what the money will be which is why you see that you have 28 cents here and 28 cents here in core and it's zero everywhere else. These two are the same thing. And the core allows you to distribute your funds into however many um, buckets you have with the max of 10 so that you can start saving up for whatever categories or whatever reason you actually need. So you're going to click on distribute your money. And then when you click on that, you'll have the opportunity to input however much you want into each of your sections. It will also tell you here you're distributing 20 cents of the money in your buckets. And then you can close distribute or you can always cancel and just leave all the money inside of your core savings. Now, it says here you allocated money to your buckets. And now all of that is now done. You've completely easily put money inside of your buckets. All right, so now we're gonna do this via the app. Many people don't like the website. I'm a web person, but I do the app once in a while. What you're gonna do is you're going to go to your app. And if you have not already done that, this will be in my first video, but a quick overview. You're just gonna to go to your account, click add bucket, and then you're gonna choose your buckets. And then you will go on to click on manage. And then with manage, you're able to get the information for each of the buckets to choose which one you want to actually fund. And so when you do that, you see they have manage buckets here and you have this word distribute. Distribute will bring up the same type of box with 0.00, .00 like you saw on the website. You will put in your funds and you will click save and then all of the funds will populate here and it will show you how much you have left in your core or what you have allocated in each as a confirmation. So next we're going to talk about withdrawals. So when it comes to your core savings account, which is your regular savings account, you know you put money inside savings for mostly emergencies, but things happen in life. So how will this affect you if you need to pull some money because your car broke down, you got a parking ticket, you got a flat tire, your water heater went up, your window broke in your house. Like, how is that going to work? Well, when it comes to withdrawals per alley, they will take the money out of your account. Um, it will come from your core first and then from your most recently created bucket unless you prioritize differently. So to break that down to be a little bit more easier to understand, all money you do for withdrawals will always come out of this account first, your core account. Now, let's say yesterday you created your family account and then three days prior you created these accounts. So automatically, Ali is going to take out whatever you have in your core account. And because you made your most recent family bucket, it will come out of this one. And then these two will be safe if the funds for these two are what you actually need to withdraw. Now, if you by chance don't want nothing from your family bucket to actually be moved, you need to move this so that this family is not two and it will be four. Because now you're going to say, well, you know what, Allie? I want you to take whatever's out of my core. I want you to take whatever is out of my education and even my emergencies. I want my family bucket to be the last one you ever touch. But you have to understand and make sure that whatever amount of money you are looking to withdraw, those three buckets or however many buckets is before that last bucket can cover whatever you are trying to withdraw. Because if not, it's going to be a problem. And now we're going to talk about deposits. And once again, 
when you make a deposit into your account, it will go into your core savings unless you tell them to do something differently. So when you make a transfer into your core savings account, as you see, it's 100% here. Well, let's just say that, okay, when you get paid in your checking account, you want to have $100 go into this core savings account here. But you don't want it to just sit here in your in your savings account. You want it to go directly to your budgets. Or you want to have a little bit of money in your core, but the rest of it directly into your budgets. So because you put $100 here, let's just say this is $100. You want to put $25 here, $25 here, and then $50 here. You will click on the update savings here. And then you will put 25%, 25%, and 50% of whatever goes into your core saving will always go into each of these buckets per that percentage. So that's how you will always make sure whatever money you get deposited into this savings account will automatically be distributed into all of your buckets or into whatever bucket you want to have your money be you know, distributed to you for that savings purpose. Otherwise, if you don't want emergency to have any kind of money right now and you don't want family, you want to pay off your student loans, you want all your money to go to student loans, then you will just put 100% here and everything else will just be at zero. And now when it comes to the good part about the interest. Now, they will, uh, each of your accounts, including your buckets, also earn interest. That is the beauty of these bucket systems, and I really, really, really like it. So they'll add all your interest paid to your core savings only unless you tell them different. So that means that when your core savings account, which had that funds of $100 for a whole um, billing period, gets its interest payment. Now, if you really, really, really want to just have a section where, okay, well, you know you're going to come into some money and you really want to just have a low risk type of savings, you want to allocate that all of your interest being paid will go to a specific bucket. Now, unlike, distrib unlike distributing your money from your core savings to up to 10 buckets, you cannot distribute your interest payments to many buckets. You can only give it to one bucket. So what I have done is I have marked one of my buckets with the name of interest so that any extra interest I receive payment wise will go right into that bucket because I just see that as another way that I'm just going to start getting another form of income, even though it's like not a whole lot, but that stuff adds up, especially if you're continuously saving and you have all of these accounts with money you're actually saving for a goal. And I'm doing long-term goals. So I know I'm going to get a lot of interest. And the more money I put into my accounts, the bigger my interest payments are going to be. So I'd rather have my interest go into its own account so it can build up to be, I guess you can call it another emergency or another nest egg or another place that I can just go wherever I feel like it. If I need a little couple dollars for something, I can go to my interest bucket because it's money I've earned from my money to help me with whatever I want to do. So um, yeah, I, I definitely love that option. And then you would just click this down arrow here. It will list all of your buckets. You will choose whatever bucket it is. The name will pop up right there. And then you would click on save. And that's literally how it goes with choosing which of your buckets will actually get the um, interest payments. Now, when it comes to your boosters, um, I have not utilized the boosters yet, but I have researched them and I have looked at the videos that Ali has provided when it comes to the boosters. So from the web view, once you get underneath of the organized, you will see optimize. And this is where the recurring transfer booster and the surprise saving booster is. I already mentioned about this recurring transfer one. And they also give you a video for each of these, which is always great for people who like to learn visually. So for the recurring transfer, you have the option of doing weekly, every two weeks or monthly. Those are the only options you have right now. You can't do 
every one week and a half, every three weeks, you can only do this. So if you're a person who are starting out with savings, I would recommend doing once a month, maybe like $20. Or if you really have um, a need to have three buckets filled, try to do a payment amount that's doable for you. So you can have all of your important bills paid and whatever remaining money you need, you always have to go into those three buckets or however many buckets you need. Put the money inside here and click next. But if you want to change your mind, you always got that cancel right there on the side. Now, when it comes to surprise savings, I'm personally a little bit conflicted when it comes to surprise savings because I think this is like a setup. <laughs> and, and I say this because, okay, so let me just explain what surprise savings is. Surprise savings um, will automatically transfer money that they find that could be working harder in your savings account. The amount of money they move will vary between a dollar and a hundred dollars. Some weeks it may be different. It's not going to be the same, but it will always be between a dollar to a hundred dollars. They will find a little more some weeks and some weeks they will find a little less. So just know it's not going to be a hundred dollars off the jump. It's literally going to vary depending upon how they analyze your spending off of your primary checking account. Now, you are not able to set up surprise savings from a Alley account. You can only use this from a foreign account. Meaning like if you have Capital One, if you have Marcus, if you have Discover or Citibank or whoever, that's the only way you can set this up. I'm not sure why they don't allow it for Ally, but they can only do it from a foreign account. Um, they will only move money on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, but not on bank holidays. But you got to keep in mind that you can only add an account again from an institution that is not Ally. So just make sure you remember that because I've had people ask me over and over again, like, why can't I do it with Ally? And I don't know, people, you got to ask Ally because they're not allowing that. Um, so, I mean, for me, I feel I, I don't I don't trust that because when I get paid, I am not utilizing my checking account for a lot of spending most times. I use PayPal when I'm using um, websites for security for, for me. I just feel more comfortable using PayPal. Um, so I'm not utilizing my, my card numbers and things like that, especially on websites I'm not familiar with. So I don't really have a lot of activity. And because of that, Will the system say, oh, well, she's not doing a whole lot, so let us take out $100. And I want to have some kind of spending money available to me at all times in my checking account, but Ali has decided upon themselves to transfer money out. Or what if an emergency happens and I know I have $400 in there and then Ali comes out um, every week and takes out money that's on the higher side and it cuts me short for what I have going on. And I mean, I just, I mean, maybe I'm making too much of it, but for me, I don't like the idea of a system determining how much money to take out of my account. And I just like to have a nice cushion available per my card without me having to worry about if my phone is charged for me to log into my app and transfer money over because that is the worst when you're in line or you somewhere and you need to get money to your card to swipe and you can't and then your phone die and then you're looking stupid. So I just, for me, I don't like it. So I am not turning this on. I am not utilizing this. Maybe I can find a use for it somewhere else if I have another checking account and I don't really use it, but I don't know. I just don't like it personally. And that's it when it comes to the Alley Buckets and their boosters. I hope this gave you information and you're not left with questions like this girl right here on the screen because she looks totally confused. <laughs> but if you have any, leave me a comment and I can try to answer them for you. But thanks for watching.